Yes, we are live. Hello. Welcome to season three of Live Lunch. Three. Season three, episode one. We are back. If you have missed us, we have missed you too. So this is like Avengers, not Endgame, but what's three? Infinity War. That's it. So in this one, half the world's population will die. In this one. So it means one of either this you season. or me, one of us could just die. That's mm -hmm. a horrible okay. thought. Oh, yeah. We've got some new uh, artwork behind us in line with the new sermon series that we've begun at Emmanuel. We are doing uh, a preaching series called On Your Mind. We need to talk about anxiety. Some of the topics are covering are depression, tomorrow, suckle, mm. mental health. Did you say suckle? Yeah, what is that? <laughs> Did you actually say suckle? Suckle, yeah. What does, One that... of the things that people find causes anxiety is this whole thing of suckling. Suckling. Uh, it's, it's, it's definitely, when we, is when we went to the word? public and said, oh, is, how, how, yeah. what, what causes you anxiety? And, and we found so many people, that they, they named that as the real issue. There's this Brexit going on, there's money problems, there's, there's, there's health problems, but really it's just suckle. I can't mm. find anyone to suckle. Mm. The word is suicide. The word is suicide. And oh, you, so you knew that. Suicide. Yeah, I did know that. Oh, um, sorry. I thought I was being really clever. That's how you actually set me up. Yeah. Cool. Um, the wonderful Megan Laura May is still or is not still, is, is on holiday in Spain. Mm -hmm. She is prolonging her summer vacation. Mm. And we are here going into autumn and cold, grey weather. Have actually, you had a good, it's pretty uh, good. Pretty good, I'd say. Have you had a good summer? Yeah, really good. We, we, we had a, we have, um, had a good family family break, which I got back from on Saturday. And um, so I, I still feel like I'm kind of, you know, when you really stop and you feel like, wow, I'm, I'm, I'm having a hard time to get back into the groove of normal life. Um, no what, you've routines. not brought your A-game to live lunch, mate? Let's see if, let's see if I can find my A-game. viewers have tuned in yep. at the new time, apologies, of one o'clock. Uh, on Tuesday, which mm. we found out earlier this morning, which is why we haven't had any <laughs> much chance to to communicate the change in timing. But mm. we will get that out there. Um, but they are expecting you to bring your A game. Yeah. They are ready for for you to be your. That's why I'm eating. Sarcastic I'm best. eating as much of this sushi as possible, so as to to just kind of fuel the tank. Great. Yeah. This is um, good. This I don't normally like sushi. But we are toying with the idea. Mm -hmm. uh, this is from our friends at. Where's the Moshimo. Moshimo. Ad, Adam, who heads up communications for, for Joel's World, um, does, isn't aware of this. So apologies that apologies to Adam that we're dropping this bomb on you on live Instagram. Mm. Uh, oh, great. Oh, Hooray! the lovely Larissa, Larissa from the cafe has brought us coffee. Fantastic. Thank you, Larissa. Should I just read it? Uh, yeah, you could do. I think there's only we'll two work it out. for us. I'm going to taste all of them and then decide. Sweet, I'll come back in a little bit then. Yeah, thanks, thanks Larissa. Larissa. Good, good, good. Is 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 the is toying with the idea of uh, during the preach having a phone number appear for people to text in their questions. Yeah. Uh, and then we could bring these questions mm -hmm. uh, up at live lunch, along yeah. with the questions that we get in the comment section. Though I do apologise because we don't have Megan with us today. I'm afraid we don't have any way of uh, of getting <laughs> the questions that you might be burning with. But please drop us a direct message, and I'll pass mm. them on to Joel if mm. appropriate. We do get some strange questions. And Megan's some the only person considering. we know who can read. Megan is the only one who yeah. can bring oh, well. the appropriate questions to yeah. the table. Oh well. Um, and so, yes, yeah, so we're exploring the idea of uh, people texting in That's questions fantastic. Let's do during that. the preach. That would be really uh, good. In the evenings. Hey, so, so mm -hmm. a little bit of behind the scenes with a uh, proposed idea about live lunch. We thought, you know, why don't we, we could move live lunch to post the evening service. So people who have questions mm -hmm. could then ask us questions after you've preached. Yeah. Live on Instagram and everything. And we do it over supper time. And we'd call it the Live, live supper. supper. Wow, the Live Supper. I could see this taking off. It's really, is it? The Live Supper. Be, I can see paintings by Michelangelo. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Just you and me on the, on the table, facing everybody. There should be a few other people at the table. Well, Megan. It'd be a long table. Yeah, yeah like, oh, the, the our iconic yellow table with the three of us facing forward, uh, being captured by Michelangelo. <laughs> captured by the police. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm very up for this. So the live yeah, we, we do have meetings after the meetings, yeah. so, so it may be tricky, but, but, we are, but let's see what we can do. We're, not doing, we're, we're sticking with live lunch because we need to honour the five people who tune in mm. every week uh, at their lunch break to watch live lunch. I think they're all robots. 
Yeah. Hmm. Bots. They're all Russian. Russian bots who hmm. are being fed with gospel truth. Fantastic. Good for them. Yeah, they need Gos- it. Gospel robots. Christian robots. Wouldn't that be quite interesting? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you feel like you're speaking you're like a future future issue that's going to be a yeah. big thing in the church? Yeah. I'm going to reach the robots. Yeah. Make, a, make space be more Convert inclusive. Convert one robot mm-hmm. and he keep converting everybody else. Mm-hmm. But then I had a fascinating thought. Yeah. This is probably, this is, I'm just rambling and you're going to tell me off. Is if a robot mm-hmm. could consume all the information out there, every single book, every single blog post, every single thing that was written... If they could completely read every single thing and analyze every single thing, wouldn't they become Christians? Because they read the Bible and realize this book is true. And we just have Christian robots everywhere. I think uh, it'd, be, it'd be how you'd tell whether they've become a Christian would be the, you know, before you baptize them, what, what kind of, how would you catechize? Do you think they'd be despondent that there isn't any mention of robots in the Bible and a lack of knowledge of uh, yeah. there being robots in yeah. here? I think wow. as long as they wear sandals, we'll let them in. We have really had a break from live lunch, which is why we are going down such rabbit holes. But, but, but it's been a good summer. I had a really good time with the, with, in France with, with Kate and the kids and uh, very, just stopped and rested. Had a good time back in the beginning of August at New Day, which was just just a fantastic New Day. I mean, it's hard to describe. Just the, it, it was such a, such a privilege and uh, adventure. So I loved every minute of it. Um, yeah, and it's good to be back back into things here in Brighton. So Great. here we go, into the autumn term. Autumn term is always a little bit crazy and hectic in a, in a kind of fun way, but kind of a little tiring, and I'm getting old. So when Christmas comes, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm ready to stop. So, but here we are, raring to go. We are, and we kicked off a new sermon series mm-hmm. on Sunday at Emmanuel. Uh, on your mind, we need to talk about anxiety. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I read this troubling stat in... Uh, it, well, I heard about the troubling stuff in the newspaper today. We said every four minutes somebody takes their life. That's the shocking um, numbers that are out there. And so I guess the question, which the answer might be very obvious, why have we chosen now to do a series on anxiety yeah. covering topics such as stress and suicide and money and wow. mental health? Well, um, we're aware of the, 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 the growing concern about it. And and we're aware of how the Bible speaks into it. It's actually how how um, we've landed in the book of Matthew. So we got to chapter eleven, which we've been going. We've gone through Matthew from early on in the year, and uh, there's this kind of um, big turn turning of the the tide moment in, at the end of chapter eleven. This big kind of hinge moment, if you like, which which is features his famous invitation: "You come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest." And I, I appreciate that that's a, a famous uh, saying from Jesus, but we wanted to, to spend time in it and drill into it, and especially, I guess, knowing that as a culture we are aware of people wrestling with issues of anxiety and, and pressure, uh, mental, mental pressure, mental health issues, ranging from you know, depression, suicidal thoughts, uh, issues of um, body image, issues of concern about the future and, and it's just a whole whole sort of array of concerns that come under the, 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 the kind of general heading of anxiety and we, we're trying to spend time in each one and, and I guess demonstrate how Jesus directly engages with each one um, which shouldn't be a surprise but I, I'm interested that people have uh, kind of been curious about this so, you know, really you want to talk about mental health in church is that really what you're going to mental, mental health in church? What? How do these things connect? As if, as if it was a sort of peculiar link, um, which is interesting to me because I think, hang on, this this is kind of the province of church. This is what Jesus came to do. He, he's he, in 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 every way he's dealing with us on that level. He's he's helping us um, in in our in our mental struggles in our in our. The renewing of our minds and setting us free from mm-hmm. from burdens that are so much to do with they, they they are at least you know the problems that we go through in life they they are <laughs> they're all of them in somehow somehow engaged with our our, mm-hmm. our, our mental life and so we we just wanting to um, preach Jesus really just do what we do every Sunday yeah. so we just kind of, every week we talk about how Jesus engages with us and how we how we can engage with him how we can meet him and know him and receive the the joys the blessings the the benefits uh, of, of, of him 
his his kingdom, his government and rule in our lives. In the in the build up to the series, when we've been talking about, or we've been planning the series and talking to people in church about the, the series that we're going to run, a lot of people, a few people, come with the question of, well, are we doing anything different? How are we gearing ourselves towards um, receiving people in who who might have questions um, to to this the the uh, to anxiety and, and mm-hmm. mental health and, mm-hmm. and stress? And, and I remember you putting it quite clearly a few weeks ago saying, well, we're not doing anything different. We're still doing church. We're mm. still preaching the gospel. We're still preaching that Jesus is the answer. We're mm. still teaching mm. the Bible. We're worshipping him. We're, we're seeing people come into community. We've got pastoral teams in place. We've been dealing with these issues mm. for many mm. years. So it's mm. not like suddenly, oh, well, we've now got to learn how to deal with people who are, are struggling with, with big issues, mm. uh, like like suicide. Mm. Um, mm. And so I think there's just real comfort and safety in that. that this is not something new we're trying mm. to come up with. This is not yeah. something different that we're trying to do we're, no. just, we're doing church that's but right we're, we're in that part of the bible where we look at how what jesus speaks to us about uh about anxiety that's it yeah that's it. um so last sunday you the topic that you spoke on was stress stress on your mind do you have a quick 30 second recap for yeah i guess stre- stress is kind of when anxiety um kind of gets in your face it's sort of it's sort of a physical manifestation of it um it might show in, in, in various symptoms, but it's, it's kind of, it's that feature of anxiety that kind of pokes itself out over the, off, over the surface. So, um, it's kind of anxiety with skin on. And we, we've seen how, I suppose, the, the passage again in Matthew chapter 11, Jesus saying, come to me all who are weary and burdened and I will give you rest, um, has direct impact on that. But it doesn't, it's not by Jesus saying, Burdens are a thing of the past. Don't, don't bother with work. Don't bother with burdens. Don't bother with labor. He actually is saying, come, t- take my yoke upon, take my burden. In fact, he, he, he's basically saying, I'll be your boss. You know, struggling with stress? Well, let me, let me be in charge. And I suppose that that might be a bit, a bit counterintuitive. We might think, well, the only way to be free from stress is to not have anyone in charge, is to be free from the burden of someone's someone's governing of me, someone's bossing me around, certainly the burden of someone's ownership of me, mm. which, is, which is what Jesus seems to be saying. He, he wants us to come under his governing authority. And, and yet he's saying that's actually mm. ultimately the way yeah. to freedom and rest. Mm. That's, that's the way to be alleviated from the pressures and burdens and wearying burdens mm. that you seem to, 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 uh, you seem to undergo in life. I've, I've come to set you free, but the way that you'll find freedom is by the, this trusting step of coming mm. under my authority, to, to come like a beast of burden, come under the yoke, come under this, this kind of harness, which agricultural, traditional cultures would, would know more about than we do. Mm-hmm. Do, I, do I really want to come under the pressure of following Jesus? It, sound, it can sound pressurising, especially when he says, take up your cross and follow me. That sounds horrendous. But he's saying, you know, my, my yoke is easy, my burden is light. And there's a kind of paradox there. There's, we, we find rest as we take on the burden, and yet it's the kind of thing you can only learn by, by doing. Yeah. You learn it by experiencing what it means to trust him. So if somebody watching this or somebody engaging with our content is feeling overwhelmed with stress in their life, hmm. what advice would you give them? What should they do now? Well, I would say, uh, I guess at first, what what is your... What is your relationship to Jesus Christ? Because if, if somebody says, well, I, I don't have um, any, any struggle with the idea that you know, Jesus is my, Jesus is, is alive from the dead, I believe, I believe that that's true, and I trust him. I, he's, he's, he's my, my Lord, he's, he's my saviour. Then, then I think there's an awful lot we can say to that person about following through on what they already believe. If you, if you believe in Jesus, then there will be huge implications if you follow through on that, if you kind of, I guess, think it through. Let the penny drop. Let, let, let the impact of what you've already decided is true kind of dawn on you. Because it, it probably hasn't yet. If, if actually you say, oh, I, I believe in Jesus, but I, I live under stress, terrible stress. 
Okay, let's talk about that. Let's talk about what does it mean to trust Jesus. Let's talk about what what does He become to you. How how, how do you understand Him? Um, how do you understand your stress? To, what do you see it as? And so it would be very very much that kind of conversation. What you you already, you already have the answers, but we need to sort of unpack. It's like you've got the you've got the suitcase. It's filled with all the resources. Let's open it up. Let's look into it. Let's start to unpack it. Um, if it's somebody who says, "Well, I don't believe in Jesus at all." Well, the conversation would be different, and, and it would be about how again, how you need to put your trust in him. But I suppose I might still be saying to them, look, this is how Jesus changes those things. How, how does Jesus get into, the, into the, the real grit of our stress? How can he? How might he? What would be the way that, that the difference that he would make if you were to take that step of trust in him? Mm. Um, but those are two different groups of people, like people who already have that faith in him, people who don't yet have that faith in him. The person that doesn't have that faith, uh, they need to be encouraged to investigate him. Brilliant. Mm. One of the points that you made um, in, your, in your sermon was learn how to question stress. Yeah. Um, practically, what does that look like? Well, I think that stress specifically um, does what it does by propaganda. Um, it's... it's, uh, it's <laughs> It's powerful even when it's irrational. Uh, it's persuasive even when it's got no basis. And it can come across as though it's unquestionable. It's, it's of course, I, well, I have every reason to be stressed. Of course I'm stressed. Why, every, anyone would be stressed. Why aren't you stressed? Um, and and it's, it's persuasive, but it's kind of forbids, it forbids questioning, it forbids defiance. Uh, it, it sort of says you haven't got time to think about it. You haven't got time to stop and reflect. You haven't got time to just refresh your memory on some other realities and to get some perspective you, you know that's not that's not you that's that's not possible for you right now and and for a, someone who believes in Jesus I would say that's one of the key things to do at times of high stress is to actually deliberately kind of defy it and refuse to believe the lie that you can't question it you can't pause and stop and consider what's true consider the the, the 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 big ultimate truths that that grant perspective that help you to see this in the light of of Jesus um, and, and it's it's it, it's hard to do that because you, you feel like you're arguing with a with a, <laughs> a, a powerful intimidating uh, propaganda artist um, and and yet we must we must learn take our stress to one side mm. and, and pummel it with questions, if you like, mm. pummel ourselves with questions. And, and, and really... Um, what that, would be some of those questions that you would ask? What, what is... What, I, I, I'll give you an example. Yes. What, is, uh, what is the worst that can happen? And what, what, why, is that, why is that worse mm. than... Than X, Y, and Z. I start, start, start investigating it. Now, there's some, I suppose, some some logical things. Even before you start, you know, there are some things that that we get stressed about. That you start to see the the, the the house of cards quite soon if you stop and think. Well, the reason I'm stressed is because I'm panic. I'm I'm thinking about multiple different worst case scenarios that are all mutually contradictory. They don't work together. They they, they can't all happen. Only one of them can happen. But I'm fearing all of them at once. Well, actually, that in itself is worth thinking through. Okay, that's just bringing some rational common sense to it is 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 helpful. But actually, I think it's it sometimes goes a little um, deeper than that. At least in terms of what what it, where where our confidence lies. The um, the the thing that that stress thrives on very often is our heightened sense of, our heightening of the importance of some things that are actually not as important. They're simply not as important as our, our flesh wants them to be, it makes them out to be. And, and this is what Jesus is so often bringing to, bringing to us, that challenge of, of, you know, you can't serve two masters. You, you've got to decide on what, what is the priority. You've got to make that call. Uh, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these other things will be given unto you. You've got to decide what, what, what do you see as the most important thing? 
And what stress does is it perhaps, perhaps brings to the surface, highlights, um, th those things that have become our preoccupation. Very often, in my case, it will be how I look, mm. how I'm coming across. Am I winning the respect of people? Am I, have I got the respect of a, a, a particular person or group of people? Have I got the respect of the room? Do you think you have my respect? Have I got the respect of Johan is yes. probably the thing that keeps me awake, trembling, yeah. sweating, sure. sweating, panicking, screaming, sure. shrieking. No doubt about that. Yeah, and uh, I've, I've, I've been severely tranquilised several times with that. No, it's, it's um, I would say, uh, it, for me, I mean, it probably is the same for many, but not every, but, but for me it would be... Not the stress of how they come across to me. <laughs> yeah, but just yeah, generally, just, no, uh, yeah, I, but pe people in general, some particular... And, and what it's revealing is, is uh, you know, I, 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 I'm not humble. Mm. I, I'm, I'm living for the approval of people as though those people's approval was more important than God's. Mm. I've allowed their approval to be the thing that counts, really. And that's why Jesus says, learn from me, for I am humble which is a peculiar thing to, to say if you think about it. Why, why is that relevant? Learn from me. If you Come to me, all who are weary and burdened, I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am humble. Well, you've got to think through what's the logic of that. Why is that even relevant? It's relevant because he's saying, I am telling you how to be human. Mm. I'm telling you, you've got it all wrong. All humanity since Adam has decided <laughs> confidently and wrongly, that, that the way to find rest is in gaining approval, in gaining godness, in gaining it by snatching it, having being the great one. Jesus says, learn from me, I'm humble. Mm. Learn, I'm completely different than Adam, completely different than all of you. I, I've learned to abide in my Father's love, in my Father's approval. Mm. I'm peaceful. I'm humble. I'm humble and, and lowly, and you'll find rest for your souls if you if you learn what I've learned. Mm. And it's it's a it's educa ed no, educative. It's instructive that he says, "Learn from me." Mm. I think, "Learn from me. Learn from me." What does that What does that suggest? Mm. Well, it suggests a process. It suggests he, he, there are certain. This this verse can flick a switch on in your mind. Mm. It, it's done that for me once or twice in my life. I mean, one occasion particularly where this verse suddenly made sense, and I was, I'll, I'll, I'll be honest, I was emotionally overwhelmed by it. It just blew. It blew my mind for about two hours. I was. I couldn't stop weeping. I was just. I was overwhelmed by the power of this passage. But I think there's also there's also the the more gradual benefit. Learn from me. In other words, watch me. Hang out with me. Watch what I'm like. And there's no substitute for that, really. However powerful a certain encounter or moment in our life can be, we do also learn gradually. Stress doesn't go overnight. Stress is something we wrestle with all our lives to some extent. But we can, we can win the war, lose a few battles, but win the war mm. over the years as we learn from the master. Watch his way. Watch how he is. Listen to his word. Listen to his voice in Scripture. Keep reading scripture, keep meditating, keep watching the way he is. And keep learning from people who have learned from him. Mm. So that's why he gives us each other. He, he, he gives us disciples. He, gives, he, gave, he chose disciples and he said, now you go and teach them. You go and disciple others. You go and the way Jesus teaches me is through people who are like Jesus. I learn so much about Jesus from Jesus-like people. I, I learn a lot from my, my own house with my Bible, but I also learn by watching other people who are better than me. And I learn from them. I watch the way they handle stress and pressure. I watch carefully. If you're a Christian and you're not watching cr more mature Christians carefully, you're missing a trick. You should watch them. Watch how they handle it. Watch the habits in their life. Watch the decisions they make. The way they don't do things as well as, 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 well as well, the way they do do things. And, and think and make deductions, watch them. Jesus says, watch me. Well, I think that includes watch the people who remind you of him. Um, and, and watch his, his life. He's come to show human life restored, redeemed. Jesus doesn't say, learn principles that are uh, you know, nice concepts. It's not like, you know, here's a few eternal concepts for you to take on. There, there are eternal principles, but they're fleshed out. The word became flesh. 
Jesus comes to show us human life stress-free. Mm-hmm. And, and so I, I think there's something about li- living a, a, a f- fully human. God, God deals with us as whole people. And it's interesting that when, God, when we see people in the Bible who are stressed, sometimes to an acute level, the way that God deals with them is interesting. It's not, it's not simply, well, take this book home with you. you know, here's, here's a podcast. Here's, a, here's some interesting material. That's important. But it's also like Elijah, uh, here's some food. <laughs> here's some sleep. Have some more sleep. Sleep a little longer. Now go and run. Go running. Go running. You know, go for a run. You hear the story in, in, in after 1 Kings 18. There's that, that powerful story of when Mo, uh, Elijah gets to a suicide level mm-hmm. of depression, fear, and stress. God deals with him on, on many levels, on his physical level is, as well as he, he deals with him as a whole man. Mm. And I think that's true to how Jesus comes, in, comes to us. As, as He says, watch me, watch this man. He's not an angel. He's not a, he's not a, a, a spreadsheet. He's a man. He's like, watch my way of doing life. Mm. Watch how I handle humanity and learn from me. Which is why, so some would say, what is the Bible? You're a preacher. What do you know about real psychological issues? And, and you don't have to have such a, a sort of forced dichotomy there. Mm. There are so many physical realities that God is, there's lots of scripture that can really help us understand how, how these things are important, how they mesh together. There you go. Brilliant. I think we have run out of time. time. We have run out of time. Um, that was, I was just caught up listening to you. Um, thanks so much for tuning in. We are carrying on the series next, uh, next week, we'll, uh, next Sunday we're looking at tomorrow. Not literally tomorrow, no. but tomorrow yeah. on your mind when uh, to, when the future causes you anxiety. Yes. What does the, the Bible teach us about that? Yes. Um, how we are asked to laugh at tomorrow. Yes. That sort of thing. Uh, I hope so. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so we'll see you next Tuesday. Thanks for joining in. See you soon.